It's about time. We're being late as it is. Five minutes. Let's wait for half a minute more. Yesterday, we mostly talked about uh, photo grammatical technology. Today, we will focus on remote sensing. And this is what we are going to look at the composition of uh, satellite fleet of Russia, China, Kazakhstan. We'll listen to presentations of uh, operators of remote sensing satellites of different countries. We'll discuss uh, technology of remote sensing data processing, primarily for uh, photogrammetric applications. Apart from that, a number of colleagues will tell us about different types of uh, space-borne imagery, radar, hyperspectral, and so on. So I would like to thank the organizers one more time. First of all, the Rockers management for putting together a, a very nice business and cultural program. So, let's get going. We have a couple of reports here this morning and uh, Viktor Adrov asked me to lead in, so I will briefly inform you about the current status and trends in Russian satellite remote sensing for mapping purposes and uh, what regulations and legislation we have at the moment. First of all, I would like to say for the benefit of our foreign colleagues, in Russia, the federal authority supervising remote sensing is the Russian Federal Space Agency, or Roscosmos. Remote sensing is one of the key areas of space activities. We have the law on uh, space activities, which establishes procedures and the main document that spells out uh, programs and policies to develop remote sensing is the Federal Space Program of Russia. At the moment, the program until 2015 is in place. This is a 10-year program, and at this moment, Roscosmos is drafting a new version of the program covering the period from 16 to 25. That program will stipulate a variety of programs. Since we're talking about remote sensing here, there will be parts dealing with uh, technology and tools uh, to develop remote uh, sensing in Russia. The update will be somewhat different. It will envisage a number of projects aimed at things you can see up on the screen. This is mostly about creating a constellation of satellites and maintaining that development of the ground infrastructure, development of data processing technology, first of all, transfer storage of massive data sets, primarily space-borne data, because today we are talking about Bronto bytes. It's no secret that a couple of years from now, 
we, in all likelihood, will forget about petabyte and something petty and uh, insignificant to store large and heavy sets of data. As far as satellite constellation or orbital group of the spacecraft is concerned, we are going to develop it and it is going to be a full-fledged system. My colleagues will tell you about that in greater detail. I will simply <coughs> mention a few general things relating to remote sensing policy in Russia. That includes development of monitoring of emergencies, development of a system for hydrometeorological monitoring and a few novelties, creation and development of uh, Arctic region monitoring. This is a specialized, dedicated system comprising two satellites for Earth observation. So we are developing these areas of practice by 2020. We are expected to have up to 15 to 20 spacecraft and we intend to maintain that level of presence permanently. Outside of the federal space program under GLONASS program uh, we are planning uh, to develop CKKS, that is a digital mapping system, which, according to the terms reference, is expected to deliver 0 0.3, 0 0.5 meter resolution, and it will be used for mapping purposes. This is what we're doing in conjunction with um, uh, several federal agencies and uh, we hope it will be optimal for developing quality mapping products. Now, what do we have up in space at the moment? First of all, it's uh, resource decay with resolution better than one meter. And our colleagues will tell you today how they improved resolution all the way to 0 0.8.75 meters. This is one of our old timers, you could say, the resource decay. It's still in operation, but since it's active life cycle has and entered its fourth stage, we put it higher in orbit, it impaired on its uh, resolution capabilities, it, now, it is now two to five meters. And the other satellite is Canopus V, which is uh, paired with Belarus satellite. These are two identical satellites. I think that together with our Kazakhstan friends and colleagues, we have a chance to discuss the possibility of a joint constellation of Russia and Kazakhstan. Two hydrometeorological satellites, Meteor M, and it's no secret that uh, this week we're holding governmental commission's meeting to accept the other satellite to authorize its uh, full operation and it will be put into service very soon. <coughs> you see here you can see some general specifications of our satellites. Like I said, uh, we have five satellites, but 
that actually it's five and a half. If we add the Belarusian satellite to it, I'm flipping through some pictures here. I just want to point out that uh, Cannabis V is quite unique because it has not one high resolution camera, but four. They have good capabilities of uh, medium resolution and high resolution, so we are able to uh, target large areas, which is very useful for Rosnes Horse and other federal agencies. Plus, there's a hyperspectral camera mounted on board. It will uh, be discussed by my colleagues. Canopus V has 2.5 resolution. It has panchromatic and multispectral imaging modes. But we're working together with Belarus. This is, this is what makes it unique. And uh, throughout the year, we're able to acquire the entire territory of Russia twice a year. If we add cloud cover to it, of course, uh, the capability will be twice as less. But since there are two satellites working, we're able to cover the entire territory of Russia, at least the most important parts several times a year, and the least urbanized places are covered at least once. Meteorium M has MSUMR camera. This is a fairly known satellite for weather monitoring and Electro L, another satellite, uni is unique because we get images every 15 minutes to address uh, weather monitoring tasks. A few words about the future. This year, the launch is planned of yet resource P number two. It's uh, nearly ready, and my colleagues from Production Center Progress uh, will have presentation on that. Next year, 2015, the third resource P is to be launched and two meteor satellites. So, in 2015, our expectations are to have nine to ten uh, satellites, depending on the success of the launches. But first of all, these are resource P satellites and two absorb no, Canopus satellites. Canopus will have infrared equipment to res respond to our request from forest agency to control forest fires. Totally new things are absorb all which we plan to launch in 2016-2017. Absor R is a space satellite, long awaited, used for location observation. It is designed by Progress Company. It is to be launched in 1718. Let's speak about uh, location, the remote sensing system in Russia. I'm talking about uh, Condor satellite. Now, which we well, we have planned to have two such satellite with resolution, location resolution better than one meter. 
A two-layer hydrometrological and oceanographic space system is what we uh, plan for the future. On uh, several orbits, on Sun, the synchronous orbit and high elliptic polar. In each of this system, we plan to have three satellites apiece and intend to maintain it that way by replacing first gen satellites with newer ones. Resource P will be replaced by resource uh, PM and so on and so forth. So, this slide shows our plans to uh, build constellation of satellites for monitoring purposes. Resource P, three satellites, Canopus V, two units, and Absorb R. So, this slide is a visual representation of where we're headed under the space program I outlined earlier. So by 2020 we should have by 32 uh, satellites. Well, anyway, 2025 uh, is something we must have. Uh, given such a deployment strategy, we cannot but look with more seriousness at the ground infrastructure. Naturally, that will require a greater effort to receive, store, process and distribute data for all consumers. For this purpose, and this is for the benefit of our foreign colleagues, we have this single uh, territorially distributed remote sensing uh, data system in Russia, which is represented by data reception centers, the single geospatial uh, data bank, and uh, Roscosmos Geo Portal providing access to data for all users. I said it yesterday and say again, we're now working, working on the open data portal and hope that toward the end of the year we will have it on the Roscosmos website so that all consumers, including from abroad, could have access to data with a resolution worse than uh, 30 meters. Uh, that includes various uh, satellites. Structurally, we have three large reception areas, one in Moscow, the other one in the Siberia, Siberian regional zone, far east regional zone with Khabarovsk and Vostochny uh, Cosmodrome. Together with the Ministry of Emergencies, we are working toward creating three Arctic centers to receive information in another in Dudinka. So these six, seven large uh, centers will in ensure reception and storage of data based on a distributed system. I mentioned the General Bank of Geoinformation Data Structure and our colleagues from China mentioned uh, the 30 millimeter land cover. Our bank also contains data on land cover with various spatial resolution and we seek 
to update the blanket coverage of Russia with one meter from a resource P with 2.5 meters coming from Canopus. Second layer, the third layer is 10, 10 to 13 meter resolution. And then with lower resolution, meteor 70 meters and so on. I already mentioned that uh, this uh, data bank relies heavily on uh, remote sensing uh, data uh, data bank. State Duma is expected to have the first hearing on the law to create the national fund of uh, national remote uh, sensing uh, data. The idea is to allow or to enable all users from Russia have access to that data. So that all the data, domestic and purchased at local uh, cost, could be stored in that uh, bank in one place. It will be geographically distributed, yes, but the but all the data will be stored in one data bank. This is the website's address, I mean Roscosmos Geoportal, and it provides free access to information, in particular metadata, high-res data will be provided and is being provided to commercial consumers for a fee. All data in Russia, that's our policy, uh, so you can get all data regardless of resolution free of charge if you are a Russian user. person speaking after me will make a presentation about that in more details. Now, this, these slides relate mostly to GeoPortal. To introduce the common geographically distributed system, uh, we have uh, the scientific center of operational monitoring of Earth. I have a colleague from that center here. He will also make his presentation and he will tell you about the activities and the products of the center. In conclusion, I would like to say that Russia is not closed and is in development and cooperation with international community. First of all, we are part of the Group for Earth Observation. We contribute uh, to CEOs, the Committee on Earth Observing Satellites, in particular WGCV and WGI. SS working groups. Two weeks ago we had a session of the working group on information services and system switching addresses uh, storage and distribution and access provision are uh, joining the Space and Global Disasters International Charter was a major decision on our part, and we have uh, completed the meeting of the Managing Council, the Steering Council. 
the meeting took place in Korea. The idea is how to use satellites available in, in space for disaster prediction and management in different countries. And of course, World Meteorological Organization, you and Spider. And since we're all in China now, I'd like to say again that we have close and fruitful uh, cooperation in the field of remote sensing in particular on top of GLONASS and communication satellites. And I'm happy to say that today in the Foreign Ministry of Russia and China, a final memorandum of remote sensing cooperation in the field of remote sensing between Russia and China. The Chinese, Chinese Center of Remote Sensing is appointed as the head center to receive and process data and our operator, the National Operational Earth Monitoring Center. <coughs> as a last note, I would like to say that Russia is open for collaboration. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready to answer your questions if we have time, which I don't think is the case. Anyways, thank you very much. Distinguished colleagues, will there be questions from the floor? If there are no questions, then I'm prepared to answer whatever questions you might have outside on the margins of this meeting.